Hello and welcome to another Blender Absolute Beginner tutorial. Today we are going to look at some modeling, do some very simple modeling, and we're going to make a house. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a simple house. And we're going to make it out of this box that we start out with. Personal preference here, I'm going to delete this lamp. It just bugs me for some reason, so I hit X to delete it. Speaking of, let me turn on my screencast key so you can see what I press. Now, we're going to use this cube and we're going to turn it into a house. Why not just draw a house like we did in our, what was that, the second video where we drew our little object point by point and then put in the faces with the F key? Well, the reason we're not going to do that is because it's harder and because it's not guaranteed to be as symmetric and it's not guaranteed to um, basically have the properties that we want out of it. So what we're going to do, and what most people do, is we're going to find a shape that is similar to what the object we want, in this case a house, and we're going to turn that shape through a series of transformations and tools, we're going to turn that shape into the house that we want. We're going to start with this box here. Now, oops, I just moved it, and I didn't want to move it, so I'm going to hit escape while it was still moving. Uh, we're going to start with this box here, and we're going to set the box to be more uniform. Now, you may not know this, but the box is not any exact or nice number value of shape. We're going to come over here, and maybe it's this scale. That's uh, This tool over here, this is the N key to bring out this tool panel. Remember, it's uh, N to toggle that on and off. Now, if we change the scale to 1, so it's nice. I think I messed it up. If yours is already at 1, leave it at 1. Um, I think I might have messed mine up in my save file. In fact, I'm just going to save startup file from this. Now, since we have a nice 2x2x2 two by two by two cube, we're going to bring it up to the level of the plane by changing the location on the Z axis to 1. And just hitting enter, and you can double check that that's right on the plane because it's too long and it was halfway down. So. Now we're going to get started on turning this thing into a house. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use tab to get into edit mode. Remember we're in object mode which is useful for selecting and moving objects. We're going to go to edit mode with tab and that allows us to select and move points and lines and faces and all that good stuff that we want to get into. The second thing we're going to do to get started here is we're going to turn on this option and we'll be using this a lot today this option down here called limit selection to visible um, if you look at the name of the Python script there it's called occlude geometry and what that means is when we click it it lets us see through the planes or the faces as if they were transparent now this is useful for selecting and working with vertices without having to turn the object all the way around to get to the other, to the other side so what we're going to do then is with our cube level a clue geometry on we're gonna look at selecting a few vertices and I'm gonna take a minute here to introduce how to select vertices efficiently there are a couple of tools I want to introduce if you remember you press A to toggle all select or not select anything it's select all or deselect all if you hit A so with that said I want to show you how to select some points if you recall in the previous tutorials I've talked about right clicking on a point and that will select it and to select multiple you can hold down control and right click easier way to do this depending on what you're working with is to hit the C button C is in cat and this gives a little circle around your cursor that you can enlarge or shrink with the scroll wheel and you can just click and drag and it will select anything that falls in that circle now here it's selecting points later we're going to be selecting edges and possibly faces but it'll select anything so if even a part of an edge when you're on edge select falls in there it'll select that edge so we've got that selected I want to show you another tool now and that is the box select tool for B for box and this gives you uh, an opportunity to drag a box and then anything in this case any points that fall in that box will be selected so use your preferred method whether it's 
clicking the points or the circle select or the box select and go ahead and select the top four vertices or points of your box. Now once you've got them selected we're going to shrink this down a little bit using just the keyboard. We're not going to use the mouse for this. So we're going to hit G for grab. We're going to hit Z to lock it to the Z axis or Z depending on where you're from and what you are used to saying. And we're going to drop it down by negative 0.5. So I actually typed that on the keyboard. And you can see down in the bottom left corner, just below where I can actually go with my mouse at the moment, um, you can see it says the information that I typed, negative 0.5 along global Z axis. To lock that in, we hit enter. And now we're going to introduce, I don't think I've introduced this tool yet, we're going to introduce the extrude tool. I think I showed it off briefly in the first video, maybe the second. What the extrude does is, and I'll show you as I do it because it's easier to see than it is to explain. So when you hit extrude or E on the keyboard, it makes copies of what is currently selected, in this case these four points, and it connects them to where they were. We're still locked on the Z axis, but if we weren't, you can see I can drag those wherever and it extrudes out from those points. I can even go down. So that's a fun, neat trick. We're going to hit Z again to lock it to the Z axis, and we're going to go up about 1, I would say. So I type that on the keyboard. I hit 1. And I'm going to hit Enter to lock that in. Now, to make this a sloped roof rather than a square-roofed building, we're going to go for the old-school uh, peaked roof. We're going to combine these four vertices to make the top part into a prism shape. Now that's a special thing to do. So what you can do is if your mouse, your cursor is inside the 3D view window, press W and it brings up a menu called specials menu. This has a few special things that we'll be using today. The first is merge. There's a keyboard shortcut for Alt M, but I like to stick with the menu myself. So this is merge with those four selected and we're gonna merge at center so we're gonna merge at the center of the currently selected points and there you have it we have our prism now to get our sloped roof now one thing to note when you're working with merge and you're working with extrude every now and then you'll get a little bit complicated geometry and sometimes you'll end up with what are called doubles or two vertices, two points occupying the same space or two planes in the same space or two lines etc. So an easy way to check for that is to hit A to select everything and then hit W again and go to remove doubles and if you have any it'll be up on the middle top a little box appears that says removed zero vertices or however many you actually had so if you're if you're getting some funkiness um, and you think you might have some double vertices, that's an easy way to do it. Select everything, W, remove doubles. Okay. Now we we have a box with a prism. I want to make a little overhang for this roof because most roofs don't don't just let it run down the walls. They they protect from any precipitation, any rain or snow by keeping it off the walls. So we need to get a little bit of an overhang to this roof. This can get a little bit tricky, but I'm going to guide you through it, so don't worry. First thing you want to do is you want to select the very top vertex, the very top point, the top of that prism. And with that selected, we're going to open up the Snap 2 menu, which is Shift-S. Again, make sure your cursor is inside the 3D view window when you do this. So Shift S opens up the snap menu and we're going to snap the cursor to, to selected. What that means is the 3D view cursor is going to move to that selected point. I'll show you why we're going to do this in a second. With that done, we're going to change down here, there's a little pull down menu for pivot center. We're going to change the pivot point to the 3D cursor. Now that's an easy way to let us pivot on that point because we move the 3D cursor to that point. Now we're going to pivot from the 3D cursor. And the thing we're going to pivot is with edge select, I'm going to show you, I'm going to select these four edges. 
Now if you use circle or box select here, you're probably going to have a bad time. And the reason for that is you will probably get some of the vertical lines as well because you're going to cross over them. So I just right clicked on each of those four vertices that we're going to we're going to make into an overhang. Actually these four edges, I said vertices. So first thing we're going to do is make copies of the points. We're going to E for extrude and then we're not going to move it anywhere. We're going to immediately jump to S for scaling and we're going to scale away from our point. Now notice because our pivot point is the very top, we get that perfect prism shape coming down as we scale away from it. So as a refresher there, what I did is I used the extrude key as a simple way to get doubles, essentially, extra, extra lines there of those four horizontal pieces on the top. And then once I made the copies, I didn't move them until I scaled them away from that point. So I know that's a little tricky. Um, you may have to watch that a couple of times, but it was setting the pivot point, extruding, and scaling. Now with that done, we're going to actually extrude out our house now and make it even bigger. The way we're going to do that is with face select. So down here we're going to choose the face select option. It looks like a box with a face selected. And you notice all the faces now have little dark squares on them. Um, these squares let you see the center of that face and lets you select the face fairly easy. Now pick a side, it doesn't matter what side, um, you can go in the red direction which is X direction or the green which is uh, Y and uh, just select the three faces that make up that side. If you're having problems you can turn off the occlude geometry so that you can only see one side at a time and select the three faces I'm going to turn my clue geometry back to transparent. And we're going to now extrude these faces. I'm going to hit E for extrude. I'm going to then hit, we're on the green, so I'm going to hit Y. And then I'm going to extrude it 2. And notice it went back through, so I'm actually going to make it negative 2 because that would be the correct direction. Sometimes, if depending on which side you choose, you may go positive 2. Depending on which axis you chose, you could go x, positive 2, negative 2. So you kind of have to play with it and figure out if you're still... But you don't have to accept the movement until you get it right. So you can hit negative 2 if it doesn't look right. Hit backspace, wasn't right. We can go 5. We could go negative 0 0.2. Yeah, we could change it however we want until it's set. Now I'm going to do negative 2, because that's what I want. I'm going to hit enter to set it. And because of the extruding, we're going to have an extra edge inside of my house that you can kind of see. I'll zoom in to show you, but it comes from the roof, that overhang. And to delete it, I'm going to edge select, I'm going to right click it, I'm going to hit X, and then delete edges. So there we have it there's my house. Now the last thing we're going to do in today's video is we're going to talk about subdivision. Let's pretend I wanted to make a door or a window or both on my house. You'll notice I don't have any points or edges within the face to actually work with. Um, so I can't just draw it on there but an easy way to do that is if we select everything we can, and I'm going to show you two ways to do it, I believe. I've only tested out one, so if I mess up, bear with me. But you can either hit subdivide over here under tools, or you can hit W and go to subdivide. It does the same exact thing. And we're going to subdivide the shape twice to give us more detail. And you notice it cuts everything in. Now, you got to be really careful with subdivide. The reason you got to be careful is because if you subdivide part of an object then if you decide to subdivide another part it can kind of mess up trying to make them mesh together so for simplicity's sake it's usually better to subdivide the entire object just in case you want to change things in the future 
So I'm going to show you another way to subdivide that's uh, for those of you that are non-committal. I'm going to hit Control Z to back out of those two subdivisions. That's the undo button. Now with everything selected, I'm going to come over on the right side here and under the properties window there's a wrench for modifiers. I'm going to click on modifiers and you can actually add a modifier called subdivision surface. Now I see why I didn't want this. Okay. This is another way to subdivide things, but this does a different kind of subdivide. If you notice it it adds this modifier here on the right that is not yet applied to the object. You can see the object is still selected, but it gives us a preview, excuse me, it gives us a preview of what the object will look like. And we can crank up the subdivisions with uh this slider here. Now you can see once it goes perfectly smooth it doesn't look like a house anymore. So this will subdivide and then smooth out, kind of turn it round, a round subdivide. Unfortunately this is a, a kind of a waste of time to explain at the moment because this is not the one we want. So if you followed me with this one we're going to actually close this modifier to remove it. And we're going to go back to this menu here or the W menu and just subdivide everything twice. This gives us a higher level of detail without changing the shape and it lets us then be able to make some windows. Now I'm going to turn off occlude geometry so that I don't get confused working with stuff. I'm going to go to face select and now I'm just going to make some doors and windows on the on the short ends. I'm going to just do a uh, one or sorry a 2 by 2 face window. I'm going to extrude it 0 0.1. Uh, we want to go in the y direction, and it looks like we want to go negative. Uh, so then I will hit enter. Come over to the other side. And we will select our four faces. This is still going to be the y direction. We're going to extrude, hit y, and this is going to be 0 0.1 enter to lock that in. Now the back of the house I don't think I'm going to do any windows just to keep it simple. Front of the house I think I'm going to do a door and one window. You guys can set this up however you like. This is going to be my door so I'm going to extrude. I'm going to do 0 0.1 just like the windows. This is the x-axis. Hit enter. And remember, if you guys ever get confused as to what you're doing as far as directions and how much, you can always look down at where the header is now. Watch how the header changes when I do the extrude. So you hit E, and it turns into the options then. Well, that was a big extrude. If you let go of the mouse and you do it with the keyboard, you can be a lot more precise. So if I hit Y, it'll say along global Y down there now, which I don't want. I want X. I'm going to do negative 0.1. Perfect. Hit enter. Now, if I zoom out and I tab to exit the edit mode, you have something that looks a lot like a house. That's going to be our first model in Blender. Aside from that, that thing you drew in the second tutorial. Now, the last step is to add a ground. And that's really simple. We're going to do Shift S, cursor to center, because we want to add, at, we're, we're going to add a plane. And if you have, if you add something, it adds to where the, the I'm sorry, I can't speak. It adds to where the cursor is. So we want the cursor at the center so that we can add there and uh, get our plane on the the grid here. So we're going to go to create and we're going to go to plane. Otherwise you can also do uh, shift A. It has that same menu. You can see that things are almost all the same. We're going to go to mesh and plane. And it's very small right now so we're going to hit scale maybe 10. That's probably too big. We'll go 8. 
hit enter. Now, if you recall, to do a quick render, it's F12. Everything's black because I removed that lamp. I'm actually going to put this into the cycles render. Now, I know I talked a lot about the blender render. The cycles render is really very similar, except for when it comes to light sources. So for light sources, we're going to add a simple one. And the way you do that is to actually add an object that emits light. So we're going to add, I'm going to click up here with the cursor just to get it away. We're going to add a small plane here. And with this plane, we're going to make it emit light, at least for the cycles render. The way you do that is you come over to the circle with the plane selected in object mode. Come over to the little circle. Uh, this is materials. This is going to give you what materials this is made of. It's blank right now, which is why everything's gray. We're going to click new for a new material. And we're going to give it a for surface that comes up. You can you can close preview. Don't worry about preview. Don't worry about custom properties. For the surface type, we're going to actually make it emission. That means it emits light. Remember, it all has to do with light. These are all different ways to treat the light. Now, emission will make it emit light. We're going to turn our strength up. I forgot what it should be. I'm going to turn mine to 10 just to start. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a yellowish color by clicking on the white and get a little bit of more yellow, just a little bit. Now don't worry about any of the other settings. Those are the only three things you need to check out and just for this one material. To set up the light source so that it shines on everything, I'm going to move it kind of behind the camera so it doesn't show up on the camera. I'm going to rotate it so that oh my pivot point I want to change back to median point, the default. So I'm going to rotate it and I want to rotate it, uh, we'll say about like that. It doesn't have to be exact. You can play with it to be exact, but it'll never be exact. Now we have this, this is kind of like a lamp now. It emits light. Now we're going to hit F12 for our quick render. And that is a cycles render of our house. It's actually pretty bright, so I'm going to turn this down to 8 and the uh, emission strength. And I'm going to hit F12 again to get another render. I'll get a little bit better shadows. All right, so that's the house we built. Um, save this file if you are working with me or if you're going to do this yourself. Save this file. I'm going to try and work with this more next time. And uh, we, can, we can get some stuff going with this, trying to make it a little bit better. So go. I'm going to save mine. I'm going to go to File, uh, Save As. And I'm going to call this one on my desktop. I'm going to call it house.blend. Save as Blender file. Done. We've got it saved. Now, you'll need this again, like I said, for the next tutorial. Thanks for sticking with me. It was a kind of long one with a lot going on. I know you may have to rewatch some parts of this video to get it all down. Post comments if you have them or questions uh, below the video. And otherwise, I will see you next week.